Hi, I'm Danny Ecker with your Chicago Business Today Midday Report. Kellogg School of Management Dean Sally Blount has outlined a turnaround strategy for the top-tier MBA program, which has fallen in a Bloomberg ranking in recent years. In recent presentations, Blount has discussed plans for a revamped curriculum and putting new Kellogg campuses in two of the world's top 10 biggest cities, likely Sao Paulo in either Beijing or Shanghai. She also said the school has raised about $100 million out of a capital campaign goal of $350 million. A large part of that funding will go toward a new building on the Evanston campus set to open in 2016. You can read more on the plans for Kellogg at chicagobusiness.com or in this week's print edition of Cranes. Well, Illinois is set to suffer a big federal funding hit because of an improvement in the state's air quality. The EPA says Illinois now meets standards set by the Clean Air Act and as a result could lose access to about $270 million in transportation improvement funds. That money is only available for regions that fail to meet the federal ozone limit to reuse on reducing traffic and improving air quality. The funding drop could jeopardize various projects in the Chicago area, including upgrades to two CTA stations and PACE bus service along the I-90 tollway. The EPA is now taking comments on the preliminary finding. On one hand, state officials are arguing that the improvement was only temporary and that more recent data needs to be considered. On the other, some business groups are saying the ruling would make Illinois more competitive with neighboring states that aren't subject to tougher ozone regulations. They say that would more than offset the loss of transportation funding. And Motorola Mobility won at least a small battle in a larger fight with Apple over technology used in its smartphones. A federal trade judge said on Friday that the Droid Click and Backflip phones, among others, did not violate Apple's patents. Apple's initial complaint came in 2010 over technology like not having to reboot a smartphone after adding an application, as well as how phones handle manual input. The larger patent showdown is over Google's Android operating system, which Motorola uses. Of course, Google agreed to buy Motorola Mobility for $12.5 billion back in August. That deal is still awaiting antitrust approval. And that's what's happening in Chicago business today. For breaking news throughout the day, follow us on Twitter at, at Crane Chicago. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.